driving to the rest. The coronavirus episode. Oh, oh, oh. Chan, chan, I guess we also, the... we also thought about calling it the toilet paper episode. Yeah, we did think about the toilet paper episode. We actually asked our mortgage, mortgage agent if baby wipes were a suitable substitute for toilet paper. He said Costco sold out, even in Squim. The toilet paper, but he didn't know the t- baby wipes. He wasn't had sure sold about out. the baby wipes. He hadn't even considered that. So I think we might have to start a new. Find baby wipes. Baby wipes. To wipe your butt so that when a couple of apocalypse comes, your butt is clean. Because that's the most important thing on the planet. That your butt is clean. Yes. When the end of the world comes. The end of the world comes, there ain't going to be toilet paper. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Actually, I read an interesting report about where the heck did the toilet paper thing come from? Because on our res, everybody is scratching their head going, what's with the toilet paper? And we kind of just write it off as like, nobody knows, nobody can figure it out, nobody can understand. Where did it come from? Where did it originate even? And the best that I could find in a Psychology Today magazine was that people copy people. And someone bought toilet paper and somebody they saw somebody buying a bunch of toilet paper so they decided they better get toilet paper too. And it went viral because they seen people buying the toilet paper out so they're not going to be the one left hanging the bag or holding the bag with no butt. toilet paper and a dirty butt. <laughs> Obviously the toilet paper isn't going to be made anymore. And it's going to be sold out. And if we need some next week, we better get it now because everybody's buying it. So we got to buy it before everybody else buys it all. So it's exactly why the coronavirus is so scary because, you know, they said it was. But it also leaves a lot of us scratching our head going, but why? And then it leaves the ones that are in it saying, what do you mean why? Of course why. It's deadly and it's horrible and it's covered the entire planet. And the other ones are scratching their head going, yeah. Like how many? Um, really? I did. I did check the number. And the number was like one tenth of one percent of how many people died crashing their car, drinking and driving. I mean, yeah, Same some people day. die. <laughs> so we were like all in two different planets of it, of the experience of it. But it, you know, it does feel like two planets it does because feel like two planets. it's like some individuals have that attitude of what is going on why is everybody going so crazy over this it's nothing to be scared about and then other people are like it's the end of the world and we need toilet paper and let's close their airports and our country and our our state let's close it so nobody can come in and out and it's like "Eh, yeah okay this is nothing to do with the virus man yeah nothing to do with the virus has to do with an agenda. No doubt about it. Many agendas. But before we fall into the victim aggressor stuff, we okay. did talk about the physical split happening this, you know, starting last year and beginning really getting heavy this year. We actually thought about it being 2017. Well, I always thought about it being 2017 because 2012 has been was a big accelerating, day. but that's the thing, right? It's yeah. like every year we get more uh, evidence of this split. So we get things like transparency and people saying enough of the sexual abuse happening on the planet, right? On their yeah. workplace for women and some men and children. Enough already. Enough of this sexual abuse happening in the Catholic Church all over the world. Enough the already. The holy weirdos. And holy weirdos. And all and the other black magics. Yeah, and, and all these other things, people are saying enough already. Okay, a lot of other religions have been exposed to be hiding and actual cults <laughs> promoting and, and cults as well. <laughs> all this sexual abuse, and they've been exposed, right? Exposed. I think and exposed is a good word, but also visible is a really a better it. word. Exactly. Exposed, exposed, and visible is the same word, but 
before a certain time in this planet. Here's the thing. I had no idea any of that stuff was going well, on. Well, maybe you didn't, but many people did, especially the people who were doing it and the people who were victims of it knew. Well, I but don't... one of the weapons of the negative side is secrecy. Don't tell, right? And threats. Nobody cares and you're going to lose everything that you have if you tell. So this has been turning around for years now. And this, this thing with the coronavirus has collapsed a couple of things already in many countries. One of them is the Industrial Revolution um, program of going to work every day, right? On your yeah. car, getting your car, getting your bus, train and go to work. That stopped in a lot of countries. People are being sent home and said, work from home. And if those people who are doing manual jobs can't go home, there's only people who are allowed to go to work. And that's not that many anymore because of the robotization of industry, right? The automation of industry. Yeah, so there's a lot, a lot of, of people less that, people that. Yeah. Then there's the educational system. And I've been yeah. talking about the educational system for years. And I've told you many times, what is the educational system? It's a way to create worker drones, a way to teach people, children, to sit in uncomfortable positions for many hours a day in order to um, follow Repeat. orders, follow orders, never going to anything into any type of depth because their brains keep changing from one subject to another every hour and to follow rules and regulations and bells. Although I do have to say, one caveat, mm -hmm. my own daughter, her school, even though it's a res school, people think res schools are crap, her chemistry teacher didn't follow the rules and has been doing a lot of experiments. They even blew up their classroom. They did blow up the classroom. Some of the kids ended up in hospital. <laughs> yeah, but they survived. They just got a little cut, but they know better than to That's mix a really chemicals. nice little humorous <laughs> side note, but the fact is that even that school is created to create worker drones. There is no exceptions. There are very few schools that are actually outside of the system, not inside of it, which promote independent thinking, thoughtful and in, in depth education, and people who are empowered and able to take on the world in a way which is more choice-based rather than program-based. So, you know, yeah, I was I'm thinking say, that there, there must there's be a exception. couple of things, you know, like a couple of things. I've been talking about this, about the vaccine things in California, for example, that if you don't vaccinate your kids, you can't send them to school. And everybody was up in arms about it. And even the people who, like, choose not to vaccinate because they're coming out of the, all that programming and control, they still want to send their kids to school. Why? Because it's a free babysitting service. Right? Because if they think about it in any length, at any length, they'll realize that they're just creating the children to be drones. And you know, if you want people to survive in modern society, maybe that's the best thing. Maybe you want your child to be able to fit into an industrial technological society where he or she can earn a living so that they can pay a mortgage or rent and food and water and everything else. Yeah, so in a sense, no victim. If you want to be good at having a life on this planet in the way that's shared by many, 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 then you need that education. You need to, have to do that. You need to, have to shut off some of these creative aspects of yourself in order to do things that you're told to do when you're told to do them according to a schedule that's not up to you. Exactly. You can't be successful at that exactly. if you run around the woods chasing deer and mm -hmm. eating wildlife. And right. Having a uh, but also, you home. know, it's like that. There's been studies that have shown wow. very, very that. clearly yeah. that, for example, oh, sorry. the vaccinations lower IQ. So, not only that, I can tell you very clearly that daily television and, and ads and whatever, they're called programming for a reason. TV programming, right? They're called programming for a reason. They're programming the masses to behave and act in certain ways. Education is not really that good. I was shocked actually by the level of mm, 
what the topics are or the if you can try to engage I mean and Larry talked about his daughter blowing out the you know not her but her chemistry teacher blowing out the classroom or the kids in there blowing out the classroom yeah, but I think yeah and it's like I would try to engage her in in-depth conversations and her brother and her sister and other kids and my own child my own son who's in school right now and it's impossible you can't engage them in a very deep conversation because they're very superficial they haven't gone into depth about anything and it's like that you know this is what we're creating this is what happens when we send our children to school it's like yeah we are the same we sent our kids to school and i can very clearly tell you when they came out at least i was there and it's like try to deprogram them so that give them a broader perspective right and my kids have been able to work through this some of them not all of them but some of them have been able to work through it pretty well I wasn't the only parent, obviously, so I didn't have full control of what they were doing. I would have preferred they stayed home, homeschooling, but that didn't quite happen. So it's like we create these systems, we created these systems to function in certain ways. And what this virus is, is very clearly showing is that we, have, we are all of us at a choice point of falling to fear and um, you know, try to f grab onto and hold on to the world as has it has been functioning, or really start looking at what's breaking down. You know, it's like people are. The media today was like a different media. It was really quite extraordinary, actually, to watch what the headlines. Because Larry is into watching the headlines, Fox News and CNN oh, and all minute. these. I don't watch those, but I do look, but I don't watch look and I take the pulse of what is so what Larry is the likes to take the pulse I don't I ignore the pulse. pulse I don't even look at it when it's something and I prefer to live my own life but he does and it was interesting to watch today how the headlines had changed from we're all gonna die from this coronavirus which I'm assuming it was before I'm sure they still <laughs> have those to the lack of pollution from people not going to school and work is gonna save more lives than the coronavirus will ever take yeah, that was right? a pretty interesting one. That was a very interesting headline. <laughs> Which is... And uh, it's like if you don't have all of the kids at school being programmed through the bell and everything, they're, they're going to be at home. At home with their parents who don't have to go to work either. Right. It's almost like a perfect the recipe to of, bring the family together. Yeah, the end of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution the industrial is the separation revolution. of the family, right? The family unit. Yep, dad go to work first and then mom goes to work too and kids go to school. So everybody's in separate places all day. Yeah. Not connected. Not connected. Separated. When it used to be that the family had some sort of skill or um, craft and they would pass that on to their children, whether it was farming or whatever it was, you know, creating technologies, it was the family thing. Um, obviously, you know, before that there was separation. There was when there was armies and wars, you know. Yeah, we well, did have to send your uh, sons off to war. Yeah, like but even that is a little bit obscure because a lot of these wars and stuff, I don't know if they reflect that properly. I mean, later on it did, right? It was send your kids to war and stuff. But it used to be that all of the entire village would go with the soldiers and they would camp out in the edges of the battlefield and then bring their sick and their injured into their camps and kill them, you know? So it wasn't that it was completely separate. But it, it eventually did separate completely and there was massive armies of just men and little villages around them that would grow or travel with them, you know, to service them. But it was it was that separation, it's like the that like dark's paradigm is about separation. We can see now that we can feel or sense that people want to separate from everybody else. It's like don't go outside, don't go to the store, don't go to work, don't go to school, don't go to the bus, don't use the metro, you know, all these things are happening. But where are they going? They're going home, like Larry said, back to the mom and dad or their family. If you're single and you don't have family, what are you doing with your day, right? Being single and no family and by yourself is something that's completely new that never happened before in our society as humans. Humans are all about connection and are all about people. 
and this thing about being single and living on your own is very new it's very very new because the strength was in the family the strength was in the tribe and um, now it's it's kind of go back to that or what you know I mean this is just happening I don't know where it's gonna evolve but I find it exciting I find it very exciting that these enslaving programming structures are falling apart I find that very exciting I, I want to know where it leads I want to know what's gonna happen I want to know how life is gonna look like in a few months and you know it's like I decided to avoid airports as much as I could several years ago I literally avoid them like the plague which is <laughs> kind of funny because there's something very very nasty about them you know they become part of the programming and part of the normalization of you treating people like cattle and right? scanning them and irradiating them and stuff like that as they go through the scans and whatever which is not right but anyways yeah it's it's interesting to see the consequence of people not having to go to work, working virtually, who can, and kids, my son's going to school, high, or college, his college, they're closed. They're not closed, they're just all the classes are virtual. And they're going home for spring break, and they're not going back, but they start up in the spring quarter virtual class. So they can have college from home, even a really fancy college. I don't know about his football. But his college is closed. At the beginning of this year, I gave you, I gave everybody like very clear indication of what was happening and what to do, right? And there were several points to it. One of them was you decided to be born here at some point in your eternal life beingness. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were born, yeah. right? You became a baby on the planet. And then we're you asleep grew up. like everyone. Yeah. Then you quickly. grew up. Yeah, and yeah, grow mostly up. growing up, not everybody, but a lot of people fair went majority. to sleep. Fair majority. The fair majority went to sleep. At some point, you decided to wake up and you woke yourself up. Yeah. You put yourself, you orchestrated this waking up. And I know you're awake, awake because you're listening to this podcast. You decided to wake up and you woke yourself up. And then you educated yourself about what it was to be awake. And that education process was um, served much, much, much better by having found you, darling. Oh, thank you very To help us much. guide through it. Because well, there is a lot of crazy teachers, let me tell you. <laughs> yes, and that's why I was asked to go public. That's why I was asked to deliver the message of empowerment. And that's why I'm giving you all these tools and stuff for you to use throughout all these years and giving you clear guidance but it's not just about following my work and it's not about just listening to my voice it's about implementing words the information that I'm giving you implementing it in your life so you educated yourself and you're still educating yourself and this is part of it this podcast is part of that and then last year and the year before we talked about embodying the new paradigm what does that mean it means that the paradigm doesn't happen, the new paradigm doesn't happen outside of yourself. It doesn't happen inside of yourself. It's something that you make happen inside, within you, right? You create it, you embody it. You drop all your programs, firewalls and BS that you've been carrying around in your world. You drop them and you decide to be that new paradigm that you want to see in the world. It still that has programs. It. it doesn't have those yeah, of programs. Course. And we have those programs that were pushed into you. Right. And you drop those programs. Those right? ones, right. And you keep and you program yourself in positive ways. Yeah. But that is an ongoing process. We're still in this bridging time, right? We're still in this place where we are experiencing both the light dark paradigm and if you've done your diligent work. The light paradigm. The light paradigm. Right? And even if you've done your work the visit seeing the dark part of it scratching your head and wondering what's going on in that world yeah you can't <laughs> understand why these people are going are so insane right about toilet paper for example yeah the toilet paper stuff so it's like this 
And now, this year, at the beginning of this year, I was very clear. I said, if you don't like what you're seeing out there, if you don't like the way you're working or the job you're doing, if you don't like the educational system, if you don't like your neighborhood or the way that society is being run where you live, go out and find yourself other people and start creating new ones. Create your new educational system. Create your new high frequency jobs. Create your new social structures. I was very clear about that. Go out and connect. And if you did that, at this moment in time space, you're not alone. You're not feeling alone. You're not feeling disconnected. You're not feeling vulnerable and you're not feeling afraid. And if any of those things are something that you are feeling, then go back and listen to the stuff that I said. But also, we have an online community walkwithmenow.com go and join that go and go there's people in your neighborhood there's people out there who are awake put out the intent put out little notices you know if you think all this is bullshit and crazy contact me this is my number let's build something better you know it's like <laughs> it's time to connect because life is all about connection human life is all about connection and we are in this pivotal time where there's a huge opportunity for us to start creating these new structures for to support us and to say no to the bullshit, right? I'm pretty sure, 100% sure that people are opening, you know, people who have their own airplanes or whatever are so going to start offering flights that don't go through the formal airports, right? Well, they already and, have that for the, um, for the, um, the private private jet guys. Yeah, the private jet guys, right? They already have that. Yeah. So, it's like there are already structures out there that can support what you want to do. And that's the other thing. What do you want to do and why? So, if you were really happy with the world and satisfied and you knew everything was working perfectly and now it's all collapsing and you're panicking, then welcome to the new reality. <laughs> yeah, that reality is uh, quite dramatic yeah it's very very dramatic very dramatic so um, one of our friends pointed out he said I've noticed that you and a couple of other friends you guys and a couple of other friends your life hasn't changed at all nothing about your life has changed since all this thing started nothing about your life has changed and it's true because we've been working from home or independently for years right and we haven't agreed with certain things and aspects of life for years. And after, I think that this is going to develop any further, some further, I perceive a lot of different options, but they will be options. If something is offered to the masses to keep them safe and they run to it, like a, an injection or something, Avoid it, like the plague. <laughs> Whatever the solution it's is, good. it's not good. The it's solution good. presented or given to you to save you from this terrible evil beast, trust me, that's yeah. not the right one. Exactly. <laughs> if they say, let's pass a law that says, you know, there's martial law and all the armies are going to take over every country. Then you'll be safe, promise. From <laughs> coronavirus or whatever. <laughs> don't you do know, it. don't do it. Don't agree to that. And I can assure you, if you have processed your fears properly and you're doing your work diligently and embodying the new paradigm diligently, your options will be clear and you will be free to live the life that you came here to live. A high frequency life. Guaranteed that's going to happen. The only person responsible for the frequency of your life? It's you. It's you. That's it. That's it. Anyway, I'll get off my pedestal. Um, pedestal? <laughs> no, no pedestal. I think it's a... Speak up off your podium. Yeah, I'll get know. off your podium. Yeah, there's, there's a, a saying, saying. A very common one. Yeah, but I keep throwing thrown out of the pedestal. People keep pushing <laughs> me off the pedestal, man. I keep climbing back on and they keep pushing me off. Pushing it's just so off. annoying by now, you know? I'm so annoyed. I should be having like this massive pedestal on the planet and get, get, getting pushed off it like come on so I'll get off my pedestal this time by myself yes, yes. <laughs> good idea so 
I can predict there's going to be two choice, there's a choice point, right? There's going to be two realities that are coming from this. One reality was going to be filled with all of these protections from all of this terrible stuff. And, you know, people telling you how to do it, who are your, um, what do we call them? Your officials, the officials that are there to protect you and save you and keep you safe. Those officials that you've elected, quote unquote, to look out for your interest because some reason or other you are not capable of it. Those ones, they'll be looking out for you. And there's another world that's not going to have that. And it's going to look completely different. And they're probably not going to even notice each other hardly. Because in the one world, I'm sure they can't even imagine a world where they're not protected from everybody else by somebody official. And this other world, we're going to be visiting and talking and flying and learning and exploring interdimensions and taking guy interstellar. I mean, the sky's the limit. We won't even have any concept of some official who's protecting us from ourselves. I just don't know. Um, I don't know. So, I could see something I read the other day. It kind of, it kind of linked in really good, which was the uh, the consequence of this will be for many of us more exposure of the manipulations and the manipulations will be so transparent it's impossible impossible not to see it and yet for some they won't see it <laughs> like the agenda for why one person dying in one country is enough to close the borders and nobody can travel and the football teams have to stop going to to practice and the basketball games are all canceled and everything that has a public group more than 200 people can't happen and all these things will be shown to then for one single purpose that will be completely obvious, written down on a piece of paper, well planned, well thought out, well executed to do a thing. Whatever thing it is, it really hardly matters. A thing. And that thing was nothing to do with protecting you from something. It was everything to do with something else. And that will be completely transparently obvious and visible to some. <laughs> I think it will be to everyone, but many people will choose to ignore it, just like the 9-11 um, thing, right? It uh, has become maybe. so freaking obvious, they can't hide it anymore, that they were demolished and it was government-based and, you know, yeah, I mean, duh. Oh, but it was so obvious, I mean, there's not even obvious, it's like the proof is everywhere. This was the demolitions and it was designed to bring about a dictatorship type laws, you know, where people have no rights. Yet, a huge amount of people choose to ignore that. Choose to ignore it. And that's it. We choose to ignore it. Larry, yeah, tell them it. about that, that, is that, ex that um, experience you had with those two people at the res. Yeah, I've seen it several times now. I was um, unloading our fish and I had my iPad with me and I was checking this or checking that, checking the weather, see if we were going to go again. And a little alert showed up on my thing. It said, Governor Inslee, quarantine the state of Washington considered to protect everyone from blah, 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 coronavirus. And I said, oh my gosh, we better get these fish out of here. Hurry up fast because the governor wants to quarantine the whole state. If he quarantines the whole state, we hope to get our fish out of here. And I said, isn't that completely absurd? And the two guys are looking at me. He's like, yeah, that's so absurd. We should do that here. Close our borders so nobody can infect us with the coronavirus. Go talk to our council. <laughs> like, guys, I think your idea of absurd and mine are completely different. Because they thought I meant we should close our borders too and quarantine ourselves. No, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> but what they heard, completely different reality. And their experience of it, Oh, let's take charge and protect ourselves by closing our borders too. We'll copy them. That will save us. Yeah, as we finish this episode, I want to talk to you about something that was brought to mind by our friend Hopi the other day as a conversation.
conversation that we were having and it, it occurred to me that this is something that not many people are aware of or have talked about in the past. And it is the way in which the human collective, we are a collective, we're not really all singular beings independent from each other. We're all highly connected. And the human collective is very good at giving birth to the people that we need as a collective to nurture and expand ourselves. Very good at that. And the conversation went along the lines of Atlantis. And I can't recall exactly what the conversation about Atlantis was, but the part that I wanted to share with you is that at the time that Atlantis existed, and even to this day in certain countries, locations, geographical locations, towns, right, were separated by crafts and skills. Crafts and guilds? Skills and skills. guilds. Yeah, guilds, yes. And um, we see a little bit of it these days. We can say that uh, Silicon Valley is about technology. We're still doing it even in modern times, right? Ah, we can yeah. talk about Seattle being the coffee capital, right? Well, a I bit. guess so. A little there's bit. a lot of coffee makers there. There is. Yeah, there's a lot of coffee makers there. <laughs> yeah, there are. But I mean, it's watered down, right? Obviously, these cities yeah, have a lot of a other bit. things, but it's a little bit, you can just see it. So, the point that I wanted to make was um, that is not our natural state. That's not our naturally. We tend to gravitate towards the interests and the, the things that we are good at or we were born to supply the human collective with, right? And Atlantis wasn't exactly a location or a country because those didn't exist before the light dark paradigm came about. I mean, there was remnants of it afterwards, but it wasn't like a location of a nation or a people, like a, a race. It had to do with the skill, the craft, and it was technologically based. It was crystal crystalline. Te crystalline technology. And so that would be like an area where that concentrated. Yeah, an area where that skill concentrated, like a guild. In Spain, I no, no, it wasn't Spain. It was in yeah, in Spain has it too. Like Toledo has the pottery. Toledo, right? Toledo has the steel. In the United States? No, Toledo in Spain. That's where Toledo steel comes from. Oh, that's the right. Swords. They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So there's certain crafts there that we know and recognize come from there. But also when I was in Ecuador, they still have towns, whole towns, that all they do is woodwork or all they do is pottery. Yeah. or all they do is metal work, right? Yeah. So if you're looking for something made out of metal, like a gate, you know what city to go to. And all of the industry there is that, all of it. So that's what I'm, I, when, why am I mentioning this? Is that as this artificial um, separation of the family, the location, yeah, it's, it, it, it's breaking down even if it breaks down for a month or two people are going to see and realize things yeah how much better it is yes <laughs> what right? heck? or for them how much worse or so when the alternatives, how more effective their company works or how, or how better how, their system is or how much in, more interesting it is to spend the day with their children mm -hmm. and I feel it feels to me that the human collective because we are raising our frequency and everyone who's awake and actively embodying the new paradigm is hugely affecting the collective that don't be surprised if what's coming is a not more natural way of moving into locations and areas that serve the human collective in a better way it's not a not so much the you know, don't take the idea that, oh, this terrible thing has a silver lining and this needed to happen in order for that to happen or whatever. Although that could be completely true, I'm not absolutely saying it isn't. But there's always unintended consequences to doing these mass planetary fear programs 
it breaks the reality. Yeah. And reality. when the reality gets broken and people are waked up a little bit, some of them run and hide. Give me that bill back. I want to get back in there and be protected. Exactly. The other ones go, wait a minute. I could live anywhere I want on the planet with my kids. I can work my job from anywhere on the planet at any time with my kids. And we could do our schoolwork and our day work together from anywhere on the planet. We're not stuck anywhere. Exactly. That's, yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like it's more fluid now. You're not stuck. This is like an, an lodging and, and sticking, but there there will be things offered to bring people back to that enslavement paradigm. Yeah, take and this shot be, and you can go back to work. Exactly right. <laughs> what yeah. a great idea. Yeah, and I can assure you, if you're active, don't be afraid because if you're active and you say, you know, I'm not going to take that shot, so what are we going to do? Organize yourself with others who are also feeling the same thing. And yes. set up a guild, set up a business, set up a Start structure, up, yeah. set up a new educational system. Everything that exists was Connect. started by a person, no exactly. different than Everything you. Everything that exists was started by a person. No okay. different than you. No different. Oh, it's the high horse. What's high horse? Oh, skin. you're riding around on your high horse? Yes, I'm riding around on my high horse. Maybe. Well, my horse is taller than your horse. No, mine is higher. Mine, mine is on a pedestal, excuse me. Mine flies. My high horse is on a pedestal <laughs> on a UFO. Oh, jeez. All right, you win. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, and so, by the way, Lucy is doing good, in case you're yes. curious. In case you're curious about Lucy, she's doing fantastic. We actually had to put her on her leash today so that she wouldn't wander off <laughs> but she can walk yeah, and she even went potty by herself so we're very very happy <laughs> feel like old people our I dog know, pooped I know, it's I a know the potty. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's tmi good. i'm sorry yeah too, a lot of tmi <laughs> <laughs> all right so here we are at the end of our podcast, Larry, is there anything else you would like to say before we close down? Yes, there is. What? Well, one of the things we had done not too long ago was spend a lot of time thinking about our in-between lives, our afterlives, souls, and how they are born and die, and the choices they make to live and die. And I don't want people to think, for some reason, that... You know, belittling a program, psychological operation that the planet's being, doing, carrying on, means that we don't care about the people that are dying. But we do also understand that there isn't anyone who is dying who hasn't picked that for a time and a place. It isn't an accident that they died. They didn't um, walk down the street and then, oops, I'm dead. These are all things that they've all thought about, and it does hurt, it is painful to lose people, but at the same time as it's painful to lose people, we also understand what those people are doing. They are picking another body, they're picking another life, they're picking another incarnation, they're going somewhere, they're making an appointment, they're having new parents, and by staying here, they're not doing that. And we want them to be where they're going to be happy. You know, maybe they want a young, healthy body. Or maybe they want to stay in the in-between lives and not come back. Or maybe they want to be a guide, a spirit guide for the rest of their family. And, you know, in order to help guide their family through the paradigm shift, they need to be non-physical. Yeah. Or maybe they want to go to a different planet. Maybe there's another planet that has already done the shift and they'd rather not experience the, you know, wiggly the bits in between. Let's just go to the light side. Or... See, there's a lot of maybes. Yeah. There's a whole lot of maybes. There's more babies than you can possibly imagine. So, yes, I experienced my mom passing away, and it was pretty traumatic. But at the same time, I knew where she was going. And it was pretty hard to find the space to be as sad as you might think you would be knowing where she's going and what she's experiencing when you 
bring all those knowings together, the entire experience is completely different than just loss, you know? It was shift, change, and reissue, and restart, rebirth, and that type of thing. And that's, that's a whole different experience of shift than just lost and gone forever. So I appreciate that it can be hard for some people, but um, it doesn't have to be that hard. You're not here by accident, right? Right. This is not like victim aggressor stuff. We have all, we're all co-creating this reality right now. And all I'm saying as a last call also is, make sure that you do what you came here to do, which is to embody the new paradigm. Because I can tell you, every single person who does that shifts the entire planet. Really does, it really, really does. And thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Driving to the res with Larry and Dinelia. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking the long way to the res today. <laughs> We're taking the very long way to the res today. Oh <laughs> Via <God>. Port Angeles. <laughs> we got to go, go to the res to Costco first. Check yeah. the toilet paper out. <laughs> We, I want to see if they have baby wipes at Costco. Because if the be toilet paper is gone and it's full of baby wipes, I'm going to laugh and laugh and laugh. Um, and we received two free newspapers today. And guess what they use in third world, the developing world, as toilet paper? Little squares of newspaper. <laughs> Actually, on a funny note, I also read that the newspaper, and I don't know what city, issued eight extra pages with no writing on it. Express, no expressly way. for the toilet use paper. of re relieving the toilet paper oh shortage my issue. God. <laughs> Eight blank pages. Okay, so at least we'll know our butts are going to be clean through this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Okay. Talk to you soon.